McDonald booked for anything. Ridiculous. Yeah. I don't like the bar for you. I'm gonna fuck out. Oh, it's adorable. Ray Mysterio, yeah, what up? See you, man. Like out spirit. Yes. yes. I can only take so much in the bar state, you know what I mean? Yeah. We gotta leave, you know? Why would you oh, be in a bar that's a whole other fucking bar? Oh, wow. Waiting on RJ Scribbles to get here right now from Hobby Airport is where he called me. He said he was in front of. Now look, we went to the Strand last night and uh, with no plans because the original comedy club plans fell through. Uh, we ended up at a hole in the wall bar. They had live music going and in between bands, uh, I got the idea to throw the ski mask on, go up and tell a few dick jokes. Now. The camera wasn't recording, so hopefully we can get back there tonight. Now, there was a video shot walking in the back that we might release. And even if, I have no reason to lie about it, uh, we did do some recording up by the seawall. But we decided to come a little bit further down the beach. Now, this beach looks dirty. That's because it is. You know, it's Galveston, Texas. There's a lot of uh, oil rigs and, like, ships and shit like that way out the coast. I actually lived here for a year and it's brutal you know one thing they always talk about in these beach towns is the locals now locals you know a lot of people think it's just because they live there no locals means they don't leave the island so uh when all you you know visitors and tourists come here acting like hacks you know driving across the bridge to get to the island and you immediately roll all four windows down and uh blare your reggae music just know the locals are looking at that they're calling you a hack they're like what the fuck they're gonna be asking you for money immediately. They know you're an easy target, you know, you, you just come here as a tourist. Uh, another thing to look out for is, you know, if you're just taking a bunch of selfies. There was a lady this morning, we got up to, uh, we wanted to film something with a sunrise. I think we're gonna do it tomorrow morning. And uh, this lady was trying and trying and trying to get a selfie with her dog. So we thought we'd be nice and like offer, you know, to help her out. She's like, no thanks, I could just do it myself. So it's a mess. I know uh, a lot of you guys are, are complaining that the constant content is slowing down. That's not the case. We're trying to upgrade a bunch of the equipment. We're doing on-site shows like this. Uh, we're going to Mexico here in about four weeks. That, that hopes to be a, a really nice big blowout show. I think I'm going to try. I, I don't know how this is going to work exactly. I think we're going to get a GoPro and try to go scuba diving. Uh, with the ski mask while doing a show. So hopefully there'll be some good drama that's broken out by that time. We could really get to the bottom of it now. Uh, RJ's an MLC fan. A couple, you know, we were walking downtown and somebody called me Ski Mask. Now, I don't know if that's a generic name, you know, but I, I know what they're talking about. They listen to MLC. You know, they, they saw Chad's outfit. They asked where my fedora was. I said, dude, that wasn't me. You know, I was in the barn. It was 98 degrees outside. And uh, I clearly had the fedora there, you know, so it's a mess. Now, I thought no better way to come out to the beach than to just cut a watermelon. Now, I don't know what Travis is doing. He's having a fucking hard time with this kite back here. Looks a little ridiculous, if you ask me. Are you having fun with that thing? I don't think he is. He, he bought the thing because it had to do with Paw Patrol, which I think they're trying to shut down right now, uh, you know, with all the mess going on. That's another thing too. I called a few uh, a, a few venues and I said, uh, "Hey, you know, can we can we film part of my radio show there? We're gonna do 20 minutes, no problem." They seemed excited about it, but they had to politely decline because of today's environment. They don't know, uh, you know. I didn't even tell them I had a ski mask or anything. They didn't even ask what the show was about. They said uh, they they have to decline all any and all radio shows. You know, of course, I'm not gonna come out and be like, "Hey, look, can I do my podcast there?" You know, because of course they're going to shut that down because that just sounds whack because everybody has a podcast, right? But uh, not everybody has a podcast that can uh, generate amazing ratings within the first month. You know, we've already gotten to the bottom of uh, Brian McCarthy. We shut him down. Thankfully, he's done. You know, on to the next. I, uh, I suggested to the Kevin that we find out where it happened to Artie Lang. Now, he said he has inside sources that say he's good. He's just chilling. But I don't know. I, I don't know if, if I can believe that because... You know, Artie's the type of guy who, who's always seeking attention, sending out tweets, doing appearances, and it seems to come at a really weird time when he just launched the new podcast that he was super excited about. 
I know Bochetti was tweeting about it a lot. I don't know what, you know, what's going on with him. Listen, I'm at the beach. I've got to cut this watermelon or figure out how to. Let me see if he's having a little bit more fun with this thing back here. I don't know. I think I think he has to send it up in the air. If he brings it over here, I'll show him how to set it. You're going to have to reset that rod right back to the top. Hey, you'll have to reset that rod. Bring, bring me the kite. You got to reset that rod into, into the top part of it. They don't make them like they used to when they make it easy. You see that rod sticking out? Yeah. You got to stick that in the top corner and make sure it's nice and tight. I did, dude. It already broke the first time I, the first time I put it out, man. It just went land sale right What a mess. I mean, you can't enjoy anything these days. Bring it over here, and I'll see if I can rig it up for you. Two ninety nine. I thought, no. Oh, yeah, but it is Paw Patrol, right? He bought it at, uh, for the Paw Patrol because they're trying to ban it, and uh, we were going to see if we couldn't, you know, stir up a little bit of controversy with that. So it's a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, and that guy just spun dirt all over the place. What an ass. I know what you're thinking. You know, I shouldn't have my audio equipment outside in the dirt. Big whoop. Look, I figured out an easy out, all right? I sealed all my sources, and I even have a blue ski mask going around my little interface here. Whack, I know. Who cares about their equipment, right? But, uh... You know, we're going to figure it out. Man, I'm excited for tonight. Um, it's going to it's gonna be easier, you know. I'm not as tense as I was when I first got here. You know, I woke up at 6 in the morning yesterday. I rushed to Houston. I uh, knew we had a show to do with Kevin, which was no problem. Then we added uh, Ken and Chad came on. And uh, the whole show, uh, it was hot. I was in a hurry. Great show, though. A lot of fun. Kevin was on fire. He roasted Chad. Chad officially changed his name to Panhandle of Florida, but is he doing beach shows yet? I call on Chad Zumach right now, and you guys can post clips to uh, get out there, Tampa. I know it's not much of a beach town because it's on the east, or excuse me, west coast. Get out there and do a beach show. Go out to the uh, the yacht harbor, you know, where the, where the boats are. Get something going. Get an outdoor show. We want to see what's going on. It was a little uh, a little flimsy that you, you wore the fedora. You know, you gave us a tease with the fedora, the sunglasses, the shirt, but yet you were wearing it inside. You know, if you're gonna if you if you got that outfit on, you gotta be outdoors, you gotta have a cigar, you know, it, yeah, I know you don't drink, but get you some cranberry juice on ice. That's what I did last night and the ladies thought I was a uh, hoot, you know, they thought I was hammered because I had the audacity to wear a ski mask in a club. And one thing I didn't realize is, you know, I was I was really timid about wearing the ski mask into a club and and all that. People love the ski mask. They get they get instantly comfortable with it. And it's like it's something to be said about that, you know? So that was a lot of fun. Uh, I'll definitely be doing that shit again. I hope. You wanna put that away? We'll cut this watermelon if you want. We'll try to figure out how to. Now I don't know if you guys know a lot about the perfect melon here. Dude, somebody is jamming the fuck out. Travis, you having fun down here in Galveston Island or what? I'm trying, man. You know, when I lived here, I told myself I'd never come back. I'd never come back. Guess where I'm at, you know? But it's a lot fun, more fun when you visit it only every now and then. Galveston's not one of those places you want to live, man. You'll get tired of it real quick, I promise you. It's, uh, like I said, during the wintertime, it ain't like it is in the summertime. I can, you know, it's nothing like that. Right, cut some good melons here. What you got? We're always recording still. Got to be careful, man. The first time I tried one of these outdoor casts, <clears throat> I did it at the lake. And uh, come to find out, I didn't plug everything up. Well, I did have everything plugged up correctly, but my inverter never kicked in. Holy smokes, bro. I bought one of these watermelons last week at that farmer's market wow. over there in Frankston, Texas. And uh, I know it was juicy then, but boy, is this thing leaking. Hey, hey, oh. Artie Klein would appreciate this. I'm sure he likes a good watermelon down there in Arizona. He's always having a blast. All right, let's do these V-cuts here. We're gonna make it real nice. It's slimy. Be sure to keep that ear. I'll need that piece. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm, I'm glad we came out here, you know? I was like, man, Galveston, you know, I don't, I don't want to return. I hated it when I lived here. I'll showcase. I think we're gonna head over and uh, look at my old apartment because it used to, it used to face this side street right next to the Walmart, 
And uh, we were throwing a party up there one night because I moved in with a guy who I thought was cool, but come to find out he was one of those World of Warcraft nerds. Now, I'm not hating the World of Warcraft players, but it was to the point where I could even have people over. It had to be a whole thing. You know, you had to be quiet the whole time. It's like, what, the, what is that? You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? It's a hack. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just hacky. All right. Check this out here. Now, this is one of those skills, people. You don't want to use this skill if you're at a party with the boys. You know, you're just going to get roasted. You're going to get made fun of. This is something you might do if, say, Saturday night you're drinking with your girlfriend's family and, uh, you know, you frankly, you tell your girlfriend's mom that she has too many Oreos to eat the night before. So the next day you wake up, you're hungover, you feel bad. She says, hey, I have a watermelon, but I'm hungover. I don't feel like cutting it. You might showcase this skill that you have, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Doesn't that sound like a thing you, like, you would probably do, right? Yeah, yeah, it's one way to show up to your, exactly. to, to your girl's mother. I mean, right, right, right. But, yeah, I mean, that's one way to win her heart over because, frankly, she's going to keep eating the Oreos whether you care about it or not. You know, and that's just the way it's going to be. Yeah. Showcasing the facts here. Look, I can join any cruise ship here. It's, I was down in the port yesterday, or last night, I think. It was like 3 in the morning we were down there because we were just off a high from that show and having so much fun. And uh, it was nice to check in to see. I used to work down there many, many moons ago. Many moons. Oh, God, dude. Brown-Eyed Girl, the worst. Brown -eyed. Literally the worst fucking song, Show dude. Show me your brown-eyed girl. Yeah, oh my god, right? <laughs> just brutal. I don't think I cut this one all the way correctly. Oh, there it is. There's the split. There's the split. There's the chip. You know what yeah. I mean? Chad could learn a couple of these skills, you know? If he's going to wear wear that outfit out, you can go down and showcase it. You can cut your perfect chips and get them out there, you know? Or his little Cuban fedora looking like a hack. You just call Chad Zumok a hack? Yeah, I'm not a fan of Chad Zumok. Ooh. Fact, that's I news would. to me. Yeah, yeah. Chad, I like you, partner. You're all right in my book. Yeah. Dude, this watermelon is leaking so much. I love it. I'll go ahead and give it a tizzy, even though I don't like it. That's not bad. Because it is from a farmer's market. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Yeah. That one guy on Twitter is going to be mad that I'm eating on the show. Look, we've been doing shows. We haven't had time to eat a lot, you know? We stopped at the gas station earlier to get some beef jerky. Then we headed down here. I happen to already have these melons on deck just to make sure, you know, because I know it can be an easy mess, you know what I mean? Mm. Wow. Look at that easy I split of the ear. A little salt, pepper, maybe a little hot sauce. Yo, what, did we bring the Silk City? Oh, we left it at the hotel, man, Silk City. Speaking yeah. of those guys, I got uh, Silk City, if you're listening, I have the peppers on the way. Now, there is a little bit of a backup at the post office. Well, God, I shipped them on a Friday. Who does that, you know what I mean? Only a hack would do something like that. Mm. I can't believe I messed up that perfectly good melon like that, man. I think it's because I'm doing the cast, you know, it's a whole thing going on out here. Well, when it's that juicy, it gets hard to cut. That is the juiciest watermelon I've ever had. That's what you do when you buy them at the farmer's market, you know? Uh, a lot of water, not much melon. Yeah, you know, like Travis could even attest to this. I was just talking about how uh, I was really timid on wearing the ski mask out in public, but boy, by the, by the people's reactions, they seem to love the mask. They really open up to it. So I think the mask is here to stay, you know. As much as I would like to fo focus on, I guess, what people say, say is regular comedy, when I get up with this thing, I kill, you know. Well, I mean, we were in we were in that elevator, and it stopped on the second floor, and these kids were getting in ready to go down to the pool. Right. And they see you in the ski mask. Yeah. And they weren't, you know, I mean, they were a little timid on coming in. I'm right. Like, Guys, it's fine. Guys, the ski mask is fine. They got in. We chatted it up. They became fans. Yeah. And I told them, you know, why, you know, let your parents, you know, watch these videos first because some of the things the comics might say in the show, you know, it's a whole thing. So, you know, I don't know what the issue is. What a great melon. Is that a good melon or what? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, man, I'm telling you. Good farmer's market melon. Mm. All right. Look at that. We got to showcase that shit, baby boy. All right, you can oh, always wow. fucking show it like that. Now, what you want to do here the night before is to pour some vodka in that thing. You can infuse it now. If you, In order to do that, if you don't uh, know exactly where to get a syringe on hand, go into your Uncle Tony's top drawer in his dresser and get the, uh, the needles on the left. The ones on the right have probably been used, and uh, who knows who he's been messing around with. It could mean AIDS or possibly worse, death. But what's worse than coronavirus, right? Mm. I decided, damn, that fucking watermelon's good. Oh, yeah. Holy smokes. Mm. Now I gotta cut the other half. I'm gonna see how fast I can do it. Yeah, well, don't cut your finger off. 
That's why I use a serrated blade. You know, I don't get a lot about these cooking shows. Everybody wants to use the sharpest knife in the house, the biggest knife in the house. You ain't gonna do that, okay? I mean, there's there's simple technique to this thing here. Serrated blade, baby boys. Wow. Yeah, man. Uh, Set that melon there. <clears throat> we cut the ear out of this thing. Bob Biggerstaff would like it. Those northern comics just don't know, man. No, they don't know what it's like about being in the south, you know? They think the Cracker Barrel's good. Sorry, Kevin, I'm not hating, but the Cracker Barrel's frankly trash, trash. compared to what, you know, some nice home cooking recipes that people can have down here. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, if I want two eggs and some hash browns, I'll cook it at the house. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I, can, I can fire up hash browns and eggs and I have all that at the house going on at the same time. No fucking problem. It's beautiful stuff. Ah! Look at that split. Look at that V-cut. This is a Ski Mask Collective show. Now, nobody's stopping by. You know, they're probably a little timid on the Ski Mask. They're having fun at the beach. They're getting sunburned like me. Yeah. I didn't put on the sunscreen. Do I need it? No, probably not. I've had skin cancer removed twice. Who cares? You know what I mean? Oh, uh, man. I always hate the songs that, you know, people decide to play at the beach, too. It's just a freaking mess, man. Absolutely horrible. It is. I, I don't want to listen to Journey. You know? Nobody wants to listen to Journey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a time for Journey. Right. But it's not at the beach. It's not at the beach. No time for Journey. All right, I think we're going to wrap this one up. We're waiting for RJ to get here. He should be here within the hour. He's across in the airport right now. He's headed in. We're going to switch spots. We're down at Jamaica Beach right now. We're going to head back east. Uh, nobody really gives a shit because he's visiting Galveston, you know. But if you guys are visiting Galveston, uh, there's a couple good bars. We went, you know, I told him I would showcase them if... Uh, they were nice and everything. We went to this place called The Spot last night. They got four or five bars. They were rude as hell. It took 30 minutes to get the fried plate. Uh, that's The Spot on Galveston Seawall Boulevard. Uh, and when we did get the fried plate, the mozzarella sticks were cold. Um, uh, what else was wrong with it? They, they, they wrapped shrimp with bacon. That's a no-no. That's, that's, you don't do that. I mean, I mean, a lot of people are a fan of it, but... I mean, it's just, it's unethical because it doesn't make sense. If, you know what I mean? The hot wings, fresh out the freezer, uh, so don't do that. And we also had to wait in line. Now, this is because of the coronavirus pandemic. And uh, they didn't plan it out too well because the people exiting the building had to exit through the line. And uh, granted, this place is massive. There's five bars in one. So uh, we'll wrap it up from there. And uh, we'll continue on with our digging. Yeah, you could get behind the scenes, I guess. Yeah. Fans want to see it, you know. They like the behind the scenes. They like to see how the show works. Yeah, well, they like to see what's going on, you know. If you're just cooped up in a studio for the, you know, the majority of your show, they're probably going to get bored after yeah. a while. Well, I can tell you, as a fan, I like to know about how my shows are run. Exactly, you know. And a lot of the, a lot, I get, especially with the compound, they keep a lot of that stuff quiet, you know. Yeah, it kind of adds drama to everything, you know. It gives them something to talk about. It's funny, also. That's why I always like Nick DiPaolo's show whenever yeah, he's roasting. Dude, uh, he's roasting, you know, the, the guys working for him. It's so good. Yeah, I'm a big Nick DiPaolo fan. I kind of stopped watching it when he moved to YouTube. It's just, you know, too much. It you is. Know, it's too, I too, I have too many shows to follow. It is, and after, yeah, exactly. That's that. That's it. I mean, if everything was. You know, suck them to one network. If everybody could, you know, put at least half of their shows on YouTube or, you know, be subscribed to it. You know, we could go to one place to get all your shows. Whether you have to subscribe to them or not, one app. You right. know, you could choose to right. subscribe to those channels. It's it's fucked having, you know, three or four or five different apps. You know, yeah. you get tired, you get burned you out, you start favoriting, you know, which app. Lose track of them. Exactly, I mean, it's, yeah. It's tough. And if you're keeping up with a show and, and you lose track of, you know, the last three or four episodes, you're going to get tired. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. You know. Um, so uh, we're here with Russell. He, uh, is a fan of uh, Misery Loves Company show and i guess you've been watching the ski mask collective program yeah big fan ski mask all right uh, i've seen most of the recent ones still trying to catch up on some of the older ones but uh big the, fan super special fan, there if i could say all right i like it i like it yeah uh we, we've been ha we've had great guests uh when before the show we were talking a little bit about the uh the, the reveal from dos Equis. you, you yeah. were really happy about that yeah, that was groundbreaking work yeah and, yeah uh, Good job to all the guys out there who are putting in all the hard work. Dominic, Joe Doing Exotic, all those guys. Yeah. They're just holding it down. 
Doing, yeah, and, and that's exactly what it is, research. We're not being phony trying about to hold it. hold them accountable, you know, at the end of the day. That's it, you know, and, and people can make a big deal about it, a little deal about it, all they want. But at the end of the day, he went on those shows, he lied. He came on my show, had the perfect chance after being away for a few months to give the full explanation, the full truth, nothing but the truth. And he still came out and gave timelines, lies, 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 you know. So. Yeah, and you know what? I was really disappointed with that because... That was you gave him the perfect opportunity to set the record straight right. officially, but you know he's not man enough to do that. Well, he could, you know, at that point he could have cleared the room. You know, yeah. he could have, and he, we could have all laughed it off, had a great time. Right. <clears throat> that show could have went one or two ways. He could have cleared the room. He could have been invited back, you know, on more shows. He could have been funny about it, but instead he sat there and lied about the same stuff that everybody knew he was been lying about for you know months past. You yes. know what I mean? So I got to know: Are you planning after all this groundbreaking work that's been revealed? Are you planning on having him back to for like a gotcha kind of show? So I don't know. I, you know, I've thought about it briefly. Or is it not even worth the time, you know? I don't think it is worth the time. You know, even though that his episode, I guess from all the controversy and things, is my most viewed episode. So fans, yeah. remember that. Uh, Ski Mask's most viewed episode is the Brian McCarthy interview. So uh, don't let him get on, get off on that. Whether you got to watch the, you know, the, the recent Kevin Brennan Chad video a thousand times, do that for me. You know, get something more viewed than Brian McCarthy, please. But uh, to answer your question, I don't think so because after Chad came on the following day and gave out Brian's phone number, uh, Brian was pretty angry at me. Yeah. Yeah, he called me a lot that day. I told him how I felt. I said, dude, it's just a phone number. Who's really calling you that much, you know? I'm going to need to get Brian's phone number for my phone book. You know what? I'll give it to you after the show because I know that he still uh, uses the same phone number, and uh, that's why – you know, it makes a lot of sense that he's, he doesn't put out the time when he's doing the show anymore yeah. and things like that. Because there was one fan, and I, and I won't say his name because I don't know if he wants me to, but it's so funny. He'll call in when Brian's live on the air because Brian has – he's always he'll, he'll always pick up the phone. Yeah. And he'll say something funny, and then Brian freaks out because I well, think Well, he's probably just happy to have a live viewer because, I mean, I can't watch that piece of shit that he puts out. I don't know. Look, if Ken Mosca says it's bad, you know it's bad it's because, bad. you know, he's a fan. He, he watches almost all the shows. Yeah. And, and, and you know, he, he likes what he likes. He's a straight-up guy. So if he says the Brian McCarthy interview show bad, I, I yeah. have to believe him and, and just not watch. Granted, I, I will clarify, I've only seen maybe two or three episodes, so I don't know the full body of work, but I wasn't impressed with what I saw. Yeah, and I, I clicked in one time, and, and at that point, I already knew who Brian was from calling into Burning Bridges a lot, uh, you know, his phonyisms getting called yeah. out. And that was right around the time that, uh, you know, he kept holding plates over Kevin's head by going on Jim and Sam, calling in, yeah. uh, you know. How well, funny was it when they hung up on him, though? It, no, it's <laughs> the greatest. Like, why... Wh- you know, he he thinks he thinks it's a big deal to call yeah. into a radio show. To call in a radio show, yeah, and, you're a big and, deal. Like Kevin said, like, wh- why would you call into a radio show to announce your sobriety? Yeah. Why don't you just get sober and let people notice? So you got to call is into he, Jim and Sam. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Is he actually sober though? I I don't know because that that you know, what was it? Two days before I had him on the show, he uh, he had the Twitter rant where he had tweeted out 99 times or something like that. Uh, speaking of Twitter rants, uh, you just brought to my attention yeah, something yeah, you yeah. wanted Let to talk about. Let me pull this up here. You know, talking everything MLC here. Right. You know, some of the other cast of characters. Chad Zumach went on a little. I'll need a and minute you're, here. And Sorry. You're, you're a Chad fan. You're a big Chad I'm a fan. I'm a Chad fan. I've been a fan of Chad's for a while. Right. I'm not like a super fan or anything. I yeah. listen to it. I don't regularly listen to his podcast, but I catch in when it's he has a good a show. Yeah, it's a yeah, good show. Yeah, right. yeah. It's a professional, yeah. well made show. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Uh, yeah. So, but. And like, he knows some interesting people. He yeah, gets some yeah, interesting that's, guests. Yeah, that always yeah. surprised Non-comedy me. Non-comedy guests. And then the thing about it, it'll be, you know, people out of the blue. You're like, whoa, like I wasn't expecting him to have that yeah. kind of guest, yeah. you know. So uh, you say that he went uh, on a little rant. Yeah, so I know uh, most of knowing the backstory about he moved, him moving out to Los Angeles and getting on that Punch Drunk sports show yes, with, yes. with Sam Tripoli. And then they got in that spat with uh, Patton uh-huh. Oswald and yeah. they got – he got kicked off the show, which I don't like Sam Tripoli at all, to be honest. He's just not my cup of tea. Right. But they kind of, the guys at All Things Comedy kind of fucked over Chad on that one because he had just moved out to Los Angeles. Yeah. I mean, he was he was he, he did it for a fresh start. So. Yeah. And I I'm, I love Bill Burr. I love uh, Burr Kreischer, but they kind of fucked him on that one. To, if we're just being honest here. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, that's taken away a guy's livelihood after he just moved to a brand new city. I mean, and right, and, and the waters out there are already so testy. So like, why why would you go through you know the trouble of making sure that a comic can't work or or you know yeah. 
further, like you say, he just moved there. He can't make money. Right, right. And, I, and Chad's I mean, a good guy. I mean, he works yeah. side splitters. That's a great club. Yeah. And uh, he comes on my show. You say that yeah. those are the best appearances. Yeah, well, I was, like I was saying earlier, my favorite episodes so far have been the ones with the three of you, you, Chad, and um, uh, Kevin. Yeah, right. I, I think, you know, it is it, good it, chemistry. Yeah, it truly is because we all three have a different dynamic. So when you bring that into the room, uh, it makes it a lot of fun. Yeah. And I always enjoy putting yeah. those shows out when I can get those guys on. Yeah. Uh, I noticed Chad did tw- change his Twitter handle to Pan Handle. Pan I love it. Handle. I mean, he, he got a, he's got to go all in on Pan Handle. He does. He has no choice at this point. Yeah. You know. I mean, otherwise, I mean, he'll be in the same situation again. Right. Smooth right. And yeah. Actually, this, this morning I filmed a video uh, where I, I went into the ocean here in Texas uh, to try to reach uh, Florida's greatest comedian. I wanted to go see him, and uh, you'll, you'll, I'll put it up. It'll be out. You'll see how that turned out. Yeah. Not good. Not good. Uh, I couldn't make it. So I'm thinking about uh, I'm going to be moving to Tampa probably at the end of, you know, I'm going to start next year in January, I hope. Okay. And hopefully be wrapped up by October. I mean, I just can't take Texas anymore. I love it here. I really do. But. It's it's too much. I got I got to get out. Like yeah. you know, it's everybody reaches that moment. It's just like same with the New York guys who are getting out of there. Everybody's got a reason. Florida seems like a nice place. If Chad can make it, I can make yeah. it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I'm not talking trash on yeah. Chad. Chad's a good hey, guy, but he just he I, likes to start I a lot said of trouble. From the beginning, I'm a Chad fan. Yeah, he just starts he starts start start trouble. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah. It's funny. No, it's, it's hilarious. It's good content. Yeah. And that uh, and that's I, the content I want to follow. Right, right. I like it. You know, to keep it hot. Yeah. Did you see that video um, that he put out? Uh, I take responsibility video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, genuinely... I, didn't, I haven't seen Chad's, but I've seen a lot of comedians are putting those oh, out. Oh, Chad's is pretty good. Okay, I'll hey, check I'll, that I'll out. I'll actually have to admit that that shit made me yeah. laugh pretty no, good. No, Chad's a funny dude. I mean, yeah. you can't deny that. No, he's no, no. I mean, guy. he's gotten where he is, you know, I mean, from being funny. So. Some really dumb shit sometimes. Right. And, you know, but at the end of the day, he's a funny guy. Yeah. Uh, so you, now he went on this rant because yeah, he went on what, this now Twitter what rant here. do you know what caused him to go on the rant? I haven't had so, time to look into it. Yeah, this is he did this yesterday. Um, he was basically ripping into Sam Tripoli about how he's a uh, you know I'm not going to read the whole right, thing right, here, right. but just kind of I'll put it here so we can kind of yeah. read it in summary that he's really disappointed that um, oh yeah 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 his best you know he's calling Sam his best friend his comedy influence you know someone who Right. Oh, uh, so does Sam Sam not talk to him anymore? No, after? no, no. At, at the at the end here, you know, he's saying, "I miss Sam a lot. I wish we could just be right. friends again." But how they kind of fucked him over on that. Oh, that, that was the backstory we were just talking about earlier. I mean, but, welcome uh, to L.A. You know, I mean, you could tell yeah, that's what it is. Anytime some kind of drama happens on the East Coast or in the news or anything like that. Yeah. The L.A. guys, they, they don't want to get in the middle of it. They just shell out big bucks, you know, but yeah. that's all that's over there. They just pretend like it never happened and they'll they film, move Yeah, on. exactly. They'll film videos and they'll move on, you know. Yeah. You don't see those guys putting out uh, hard-worked specials like yeah. the, guy in New York, the guys in New York do and yeah, things like that. Yeah, it's just a different kind of vibe, different kind of scene out there. <laughs> yeah, right. So I'm, I'm definitely more of an East Coast comic. Absolutely. I, like, I mean, yeah. Like yeah. I was saying, I like some of the, the West Coast guys, but, you know, pound for pound. I, I don't mean, know. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't – I'm trying to think if there's a – a West Coast comic that I genuinely—I mean, don't get me wrong—they're funny, but I'm talking in general that I look up to. You know, when it, when I'm you know feeling down about writing or you know I can't, you know, sometimes you just gotta go on to watch an act. I don't think there's anybody on the West Coast I, I yeah. go out of my way to look up. You yeah. know, I not—I can't think of on the top of my head. Yeah, and I mean there are some big names like Chris D'Elia is pretty funny. Yeah, I mean he, he's a big name, but he's yeah. done some questionable shit. Yeah, you know, as far as sell sell out and selling. No, I agree, but he's a funny dude though. No, he's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. So, uh, anyway, so it was just uh, kind of breaking news about Chad. We were just talking about Chad there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, the fans love it when you're going to talk about the characters, you know, shed some behind-the-scenes stuff. We were talking earlier. You kind of had the same backstory I did of uh, learning about podcasts. You were Artie Lang fan yep, first. Yeah, a big Artie Lang fan. Right. Uh, he wasn't the first <laughs> podcast I listened to, but, um, you know, listen to Artie Lang because I – now I'm a Kevin Brennan super fan, but to right. be honest, I haven't heard of Kevin Brennan up until a couple years ago. Yeah. So yeah. kind of when he was blowing up on Compound and uh-huh. Burning Bridges, um, I wasn't listening from the beginning. I've listened to all the Burning Bridges. I you mean, know, uh, yeah. not the, the podcast, the Misery Less Company, I mean, you know, with the big blow up. I wasn't <laughs> listening to it back then, but I've, you know, I'm now familiar with it. So I know we were talking about the recent state of uh, Compound Media. Now that you say that, 
you know, Compound Media really hasn't been the same since Kevin left no, the network. No, you they've know? kind of been downward spiral. Right. And I was listening to, was that episode 20 that was released yesterday of Ski Mask? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. You guys were talking about the future of Compound. It's really interesting. I hadn't really thought about it that way until I heard that discussion that, you know, they need to just cut all the fat and focus on yeah, what they're doing. Because, I mean, on, honestly, if you, if you go through the Twitter timelines, that's where all the fans hide out. It's the place to be. Yeah. Any other social network, if you feel like looking up, there's not a lot of chatter yeah. about the other shows. There's chatter about In Hot Water, and there's yeah. chatter Hot about uh, Anthony Cumia's show. Of course, Those it's guys are network. great. Right. Gino yeah. and Aaron are great. Those guys are hilarious. I had uh, I had Gino on the show. Yeah, that was a good one. I saw them in uh, San Antonio. Aaron, a lot of though. fun. I would, I would love to get Aaron. I'm waiting a little while because yeah. I, I, Aaron's got a lot going on right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm definitely more of an Aaron fan than Gino. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Gino is funny. But I think they both bring a lot to the they, table. Yeah, they're, you know? they're a good pairing. Yeah, you know, they yeah. bounce off each other. Did you uh, Did you happen to see the, the Pat Oates episode? Yeah, I did. That was good. That was good. Did you know about him before my show? I did not. Or? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm not um, – I should say I did – I am a former subscriber, so I'm not a current subscriber. Right. So I'm not – I hear what's going on, but I'm not – a hundred percent up to date. Whoa, dude, we got some cops showing yeah, up. Yeah, this is great. What's going yeah, on? Earlier, we had that freaking basketball hoop got we ripped did. down. Like it was like a freaking oh my God. wrestling so, move. So, uh, so cops in short shorts just showed up. He went to the right. Then you had a, a police officer in long pants. He went to the left. Yeah, and they're circling around. Yeah. Uh, what this happened might earlier? Be a race-related incident. They're going to a black guy. Are they? Wow, African or American. A darker guy. You know, this happened last night. I was downtown, and um, an African American gentleman stole a wallet. Uh -huh. And three police cars came out of nowhere to yeah. show up for the incident. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what's going on back there right now? So that's the hotel manager, it looks like, in the blue shirt. Yeah. Uh, he's walking away. Now, what happened before we sat down and did this podcast, somebody hung on a little too long on a basketball goal and said they barely did. Yeah, There's no rust. Down. There's no rust on the basketball yeah. goal. It was put down in the hole. It's made out of pure metal. Yeah, and I didn't get uh, a good look at it. I'll just say that. Yeah, I mean it was broke. It, it was broke I mean, right in I half. Saw it, on the ground. <laughs> it was a sturdy basketball goal. Yeah. We were here messing around with it last night, yeah. having a having a blast. You know, as long as you're not too heavy on it. Yeah. Wow, everybody's out on their balcony, <clears throat> looking yeah. at this incident right now. This is so, crazy. This is crazy. This yeah. is wild. This is why you got to do more shows like this. I, out, yeah, you know, right? You're right, out man. With I just the gotta, people, I got to start show for the people. I have to start setting up for it. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna walk over here. First off, I'm gonna make sure my camera's still going because I still yeah, haven't yeah, yeah, updated yeah, yeah, yeah. the audio equipment. Just, just, to, just to do what you need to do. I gotta get a snippet of like that. Like we were saying earlier, the behind-the-scenes stuff is good. It really is. It's beautiful stuff. I want to make sure. I hope this camera's on. Well, sounds like a shitload more cops are showing up here. It does. Maybe is that a, hopefully an ambulance? No, that does sound like an ambulance. You could tell a oh, difference yeah, between yeah. the sirens. I guess somebody had too much to drink. Earlier we were at Jamaica Beach, and this guy came down on a motorcycle, and uh, he was driving right next to the cars, and he kept weaving in and out. Yeah. So we started up the camera, and when he saw the ca that we were filming, he wasn't having any of it. And yeah. uh, so I, I know that he pulled out a phone. I don't know if he was calling us biker friends or what, so I quickly changed colors of the ski mask for an hour or two. Yeah. And, uh, that, yeah. that pink ski mask is easy to see. It is. It was not only is it easy to spot. It's uh, you know you look up anything pink ski mask, you're probably going to come across yeah, ski mask collective. Eventually they're going to get to you. One way yeah, they'll another. find the show. They'll they'll leave. I think they might abuse. become a fan. I, I would hope so. Yeah, uh, I made I made a quite a few fans last night. Yeah, uh, we went down to the downtown here, and like I said, uh, I was talking about on the earlier portion of the show I did on the beach. Uh, it, it people love the ski mask. I don't know what yeah. it is, man. I would. No, it's a good look. It's a signature look. I I I, I think so. So I I think I'm gonna. I mean, uh, who else is wearing a ski mask? Right. You know, it's Other 98 degrees out here. Robbers make a lot and whatnot. Of, but who? Yeah. People doing good are wearing ski masks. Right. And, and, and when it comes to the the guys robbing, I mean, they don't even do it blatantly anymore. Yeah. A lot of those guys. Well, that's kind of giving you a bad name, though. Right. Yeah. But that's why I have the pink one. I originally yeah, you're bought looking it. to rebrand the ski mask. Yeah. And I had like eight different colors. I, I happen to the. This brand one, this is my original one. I have the newer one uh, somewhere. I think it's behind me in the bag. Uh, I reached out to the company because they sell well, we party got the packs. blue one right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was using that to hold on to the mics. And I had my interface sitting in it uh, earlier at the beach so sand wouldn't get in. Because I know I'm going to receive some flack yeah. for having my audio equipment at the beach. Yeah. Who cares? If you know what you're doing, you know hey, how to. Just out here having fun. You know? Yeah, you know, you're stealing stuff. Well, people love to hate because, you know, yeah. they want to do shows hey, in their studio. The haters are watching. They're adding hits to the YouTube. They are, but I'll tell you what, you know, they don't, I don't, I don't get a lot of hate comments. I need some more. You yeah. know, leave me some so hate, man. I try to always be quick to the comments. So I think you're, you caught on to that. Whether I'm watching or not, I have. as soon as it pops, 
I go put a comment on there. Your comments make me laugh because I every now I, every time I put a video up, I'm waiting for it. It's yeah. always you know, of course, the slogan: constant, yes. constant content, I was constantly busy being last released. Night, so I couldn't watch it, so I but I've made sure to hit a comment. I on saw there. it. I, I was like uh, a super fan. Does. Yeah, it was it was a little while yeah, yeah. afterward because it took me it took me a while to put it out because uh, I got to the hotel and I I left my laptop uh, back in Houston. And I didn't realize that the Zoom communications uh, that you do on telephone, uh -huh. they go to a cloud, and then you yeah. can only download it to a laptop. I know yeah. we've been commenting on yeah, the whole situation. Oh, we got live breaking yeah, commentary gonna, over here. Huh? You want to break going on? Oh, yeah. uh, where's the arrest? Yeah, give yeah, us we're getting an arrest going on. Okay. So this guy, he's getting arrested. Yeah, over what happened? Here. Um, he dunked on the goal apparently. Right. Okay. And oh, broke so it. that's the basketball guy. But yeah, yeah. Oh, great. I went over there and swam for a little while, oh, and dude, there was multiple hey. kids, and he was blaring very vulgar rap. Music. Really, really, really. Hey, yeah. is there any way that you can flip that? Hey, Travis, is there any way you uh you can get ready to flip that camera around? Um, let, let's see what we can do. No, not yet, not yet. But when they uh when they when they're dragging him out. Oh, dude, he's in cuffs now. Yeah, yeah. No, he he's going to jail. I couldn't um, see because the chair was in the way. Yeah, but the cops came in through here. Yeah, yeah they walked right by us. Uh, yeah, get that camera ready to flip around. Just just press this the flip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Press the flip around. This is the kind of stuff that only happens on Ski Mask. Don't, don't do the whole tripod. Just do, uh, oh, man. I really wanted to capture that arrest. Yeah, he's gone. They're they're hauling him off. Now, wait a second. They came in through the front, so the I wonder. The car is right here, right here. The where? Right, the right forward. The That's right the forward? Car. Where? Right there with the lights on. Oh, the, the it's the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. Get the camera ready. We'll we'll film we'll film that section. We'll film him getting in the vehicle. Can you see it? Are you able to move the angle and see everything? All right, I'll comment on it over here. Yeah, I, I'm I'm limited here because I got a short. But yeah, you. Yeah, that's forward. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as the camera angle is still working, we can get down to the bottom of this Breaking right now. News. This is this yeah, is incredible. This is when he uh, he broke the basketball goal. So, huh? I don't know if he wants you to film. All right, I'll let you know whenever yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see some action. We'll try and capture that here in a minute. You know, it could have been, it could have been a high-profile situation, so they carried him out the back. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to get him to the front. He could be like the mayor of Galveston or something. Uh, the guy that got arrested? Yeah. I don't He's know. High-profile. If, if the mayor of Galveston was playing uh, vulgar music, such as what he was playing, that would be a lot. There'd be yeah. a lot going no, on. No, with probably that. not. Probably not. That was that was dumb. Right. 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 All right, so uh, <clears throat> I would love to capture the arrest uh, on film, so the, the, but, the you know you don't want to be too obvious about it. No, I don't you because uh, you know what a, you know, but they're not going to shut down my show. It's yeah. Ski Mask Collective. I mean, yeah. I have an, I'm an official media mogul, uh, as they call it now. Uh, yeah. but, you know, multiple multiple platforms, videos, multiple guests, multiple hits. You know, <clears throat> people love the show. So yeah, uh, I don't care. You know, you but know, this is the kind of wild stuff that they come here for—the gossip and the wild stuff. Exactly. Well, last night, you know, uh, we—it was three in the morning. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, Where is the arrest? Are they, are they walking out? Oh, he's coming out front. They're oh, they're still down. having some talk with him. Okay. So we'll continue to monitor yeah, the we're, situation we're, we're, because we're now, the situation. now he's sitting on the bench, <clears throat> and uh, they're probably going to get his general info. Hopefully, he'll he'll be sitting there in cuffs yeah. so long. That he gets tired of it and it starts a big scene, yeah. then we can be sure to film that and it, it'll, it'll be great. It'll be great shit for the show. You're not on World Star, are you? No, I, I hope not. <laughs> I, I don't want to be on World Star. I think that uh, the World Star accumulates uh, not a very good name. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Some of those guys treat it as a badge of honor, but I, to be honest, I don't. I don't because now every time a fight breaks down and there's six guys on one and yeah. they may be from different communities. Somebody has to yell "World Star," you know. Yeah, it, I hope I go my entire life without making it on World Star. I do too, you know, and I don't know if that can happen because, like, I, I was getting into uh, last night. It was three in the morning, and these guys were about to break into a fight, and they asked if we wanted to join. I uh, I showed my media card and ski mask. I said we'll follow thirty, forty feet behind, and yeah, uh, if anything great. breaks out, I'll throw the ski mask on. We'll yeah, fire up the camera. Commentary. Right, right. You got to get Kevin Brennan on a fight commentary. That would be great because. Uh, or, you did, know what, honestly, didn't he do one on Twitter, I thought? I don't know. You know who would be great for that? Who? Brian P. McCarthy. Why? The puns. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. If, I, I don't, don't know. Maybe not. I don't uh, know if it would be like a plus or a minus. It could go minus. good or bad. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of everything with Brian P. McCarthy. So what's going on? Okay, now they're bringing up uh, oh, so Mark unit. Yeah, yeah, they probably didn't want to put him in the nice F two fifty truck. Yeah. So now they're gonna they're gonna. Oh, the valet brought the police car. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dude, <they're getting laughs> dude, they let a valet guy drive the cop car. It's probably not his first time That's either. Wild. Yeah. No, for real, the valet guy. He's going to valet the cop car. 
fantastic. Oh, so the constable showed up. That's a big ass truck. It is, but you need that kind of thing to be on a yeah. beach down here. Yeah. Yeah. You need all that power. Well, what does he get? I hope they're not ordering onion rings. I want some. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think you can. You'll be able to see the cop car pass behind us here. No, they're turning off. Wow, they took every angle to not get involved yeah, in no, my they, show. They didn't want to. They're they, haters. They really were, and they have every right to tell me to pull off the masks. Does that yeah. mean I will? No, probably not. Get a warrant. For yeah, that mask. dude, get a warrant. I'll take off the mask then. Listen, I have a bad skin condition. Okay, it's called AIDS on my forehead. Don't ask how I got it. Uh, wow, what a mess. I hope to see more arrests, so I need to, I'm going to charge the phone because we're going to go downtown tonight, I cool. think, over to the Strand. It's going to get a little crazy down there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I am getting hungry, though. I need to find, like, like a, good, a good burger or I don't even know what would be good down here, you know? I don't know either. I don't know Galveston <laughs> at all. I don't either. You know, I lived here for a year, five years ago, and uh, at that time I said I would never be back. I'm back. It's one of those places where it's nice to visit for two or three days. Yeah. You don't want to live here, man. Right. You don't. It's, right. it's a mess in the wintertime. It's just, like, depressing. Hurricanes. It's, yeah, it's just it's too much. You got to, yeah, exactly. You got to go to the Home Depot and put boards on the door. Who wants yeah. to do that? Yeah. It's a lot going on. Too yeah. much going on. You got you got shows to do. I got plenty of shows to do. I got constant, constant content. So can you give us a little more behind the scenes? Do we have any big, big guests coming up as a super fan? Uh, on the let's see radar? here who I'm working on. Uh, honestly, you know who I've been trying to work on is uh, that Crip Daddy. Do, okay. you, uh, do you know him? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I sent him an email. He briefly got back to me, and I haven't heard back. Uh, I think he's busy, so I am gonna I'm gonna contact Kevin and see if we can't get him for a show. Of course, you know. Uh, uh, what what's his name? Mark Random, you know, is going to be doing Kevin's show. Okay. Uh, I, you know, if he, I, I, I wouldn't have him on my show as okay. of yet because I'm not established enough. Not so big he, enough, yeah. 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 So if he was to do my show and say some crazy shit, I don't, yeah. I don't want to have to make an excuse not to put it up. I just yeah. know my limit not to have my butt. I would do the MLC well, and show. And we want the wild stuff. That's what you know. That's what I know. The fans but want. you got to be careful uh, when so it don't comes. Don't tease us with that. No, I mean what out. I'm saying is he'll he'll do MLC. Because yeah, they've already right. been talking about that, uh, obviously on Twitter, and uh, hopefully I'll be a part of that. Now I'll do gotcha. Kevin. I'll do Kevin's show. Yeah, but you were great when you called in to Kevin's MLC a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Did I? Which one was? Uh, uh, Very lost company. You, yeah. You, uh, you and your brother called in. Oh yeah, yeah. That was the first. Uh, that was my the first Maybe appearance. Maybe a month ago now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About a month ago. Yeah. That was right after the show we did, where my brother was talking trash, set us on the map a bit, and uh, was. Allowed us to get down to Brian McCarthy and uh, eventually lead him to reaching out to me to come in on my show, which led to his downfall. Now, we also, uh, I think Dave Landau's coming up this Dave week. Dave Landau would be great. Yeah, and I'm, uh, all the shit that I'm filming this weekend. I'll Who be would be a dream guest? You just Ooh. take a minute and think about it. Man. Number one dream guest. All right. Shoot for the stars. Yeah, but the fans are going to gonna attack me, you know? They're not going to like who I say. Uh, I, well, I got your show. You, yeah, you, I mean, yeah. I got three guys I would love to have on my show: Jim Florentine, okay. Bobby Kelly, and okay. Anthony Cumia. I mean, any, all three of those guys I would love to have the, the show. Two of the three are very attainable. Cumia would be tough. I, I think Bobby would be the toughest. Oh really? Yeah, I really do. I bet Florentine would do it if you give him I, a list. I of think the he other would guys. eventually. Yeah, yeah. Florentine does a lot of stuff. He does, but now that he's on Barstool, I'm sure he's, oh, he's a yeah. little bit more careful. Wise, I don't yeah, know. yeah. I mean, back. I mean. No, I forgot about Florentine that. Florentine is Florentine would do the show, yeah. but as far as the business model works, I don't know if he'd do the show yet. Yeah. You know, uh, I think Kumi would do the show. I mean, he does. Uh, he does a lot of yeah, shows. Yeah, he so does. He does really big shows. He I don't think do Bobby would do it. Stuff. I think Bobby is uh, has has too high of an ego to do my show. Yeah. It's hard to get him to do a guest on any show, much yeah. less you know Chip Chipperson or he's anything kind like of, that. Yeah, he's kind of uh, high maintenance. Real, yeah, yeah. I, I guess he would say. What about you? What would you? Who would you like to see me Man, get? You know, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. You've had so many great guests already. That so, I'm yeah, I mean, I've been blessed with who. those guys, yeah. Oh, man. I don't know. Let me think about it. I'll get that back to you. All right, yeah, yeah. Tweet that out to me. Yeah, uh, I'll tweet you. Your Twitter handle is? RJ Scribbles. RJ Scribbles. You'll know him. He's been in the comments before. It can get uh, a little spicy on there sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it could be spicy. Uh, you'll know him. The profile picture is a guy you will recognize in his younger years with a white hat. That's my dream guest for you right there. Oh, my God. Check if I could out get my that, Twitter dude, to see dude, who it is. Yeah, no, if I could get that guy, wow, I would love to have him. I mean, it could be interesting. You get him with <laughs> Chad and Kevin on there. I mean, that could get interesting. I don't, yeah, that would get. I, I, I don't know. That I, might get a little out of control. Yeah, that would be like a solo show. I think I would yeah, have to, yeah, yeah. to interview that man. Uh, okay, yeah, that's a dream guest. I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing here. Yeah. 
Well, uh, so we're going to wrap it up here. I think we're going to cut off to the next uh, the next part. We might do downtown. I don't know where it's going to go from here. Well, it's been an honor to have to dude, be on the show. Dude, I appreciate you driving I'm down, man. I'm a big man. fan you, of the you, show. You drove an hour to come down yeah, and, and be traffic. on the show. So. Uh, we started talking before the show. And we were like, dude, we have to shut up. we got to get on. There's so much to talk about. Yeah. You know? So. What, do you, what do you think about I'm it? Do you, do, do you think Kevin is telling the truth when he says uh, – Artie Lang's just hiding out. You know, that was interesting. I don't know. I think there could be true, but with Artie's history, man, you just you never know. It could yeah, be because off the, rails. The, the reason that makes me think otherwise is he had just launched the new podcast. Yeah, he was and very I excited. Really about, enjoyed yeah, that podcast. He, he was very excited. Kevin about it. was great on there. That I was thought, my favorite episode. Yeah, I thought Kevin was going to be a part of that. The comics yeah. gym and then the whole thing kind of fell apart. He, he got brushed under the rug. Yeah. It, you know, to be blatant about it. Yeah. And um, I haven't heard from Artie since. And it's it's hard to see that Artie Lang would go that you long. Should get Bochetti from that show. I don't know. I, I mean, a lot of people have recommended him. I'm. Uh, I know I'm having the two tired twats on soon. Get awesome. Two gals I on. love those gals. Yeah, they're, they're hilarious. I don't watch their show though, but I like them yeah, when they're I'll, on. I like them when they Kevin. do Kevin's show because yeah. they're loud, they're funny. Uh, I know Barry Ribs wants get to do more. They get them up too. They get Kevin all worked oh, up. Oh yeah, they do. That's what's funny. So hopefully I can get them on. I'll get them riled up talking yeah. Kevin. But uh, all right, man. So cool. uh, people follow you on Twitter. Anything yeah. else you want to? No, I'm all good. It's been an honor to be. I appreciate it. I'll be in, in Houston. I'll be in Houston uh, coming up soon, yeah, and let's I'll, do it again. I'll get together with you, man. I appreciate it. All right. All right. How about that killer performance by Russell coming in hot? You know, anybody would be nervous uh, meeting up with a fan, especially, you know, they're not coming out to a paid show. They're not buying tickets or anything like that. The man drove, I think, about an hour and a half plus traffic to get to Galveston and then uh, was nice enough to wait on me. I was running late. I was getting wrapped up with that first part of the show. And, uh, you know, I, I, I had him meet me at a hotel that was very close to mine but not mine. You know, so I could meet him in person, feel him out. We hit it off immediately. I mean, you know, we were setting up the gear. We're like 20 minutes talking. The gear's already set up. We're like, dude, you, you, we, we should be recording this, you know. He knew all the knowledge and just a real fan of all the shows. So thank you again, Russell, for coming out. Uh, I'll let you know next time I'm in Houston if there's any shows going on. I don't think I'll be going back to Galveston. Uh, it was nice and everything while it lasted. But, uh, you know, that, like I said before, that place is nice for one or two days and that's it. But, you know, I've already, I've already been there and done that. I, I lived there for a year and uh, that was a fucking nightmare. And I got out. I left in 2015. That was when I was working the ports over there. And uh, I said, you know what? I, I have no desire, absolutely none, to ever come back to this island. Well, you know, coronavirus broke out. Not a lot of shows going on. I'm like, man, you know, it'd be nice to do something wild like... Just, you know, go do a show on the beach. Well, the way everything worked out, I was able to secure a room for cheap. I'm like, you know what? I'll pick up Travis. We'll go down. We'll have a good time. I'll send out, a, you know, a flyer trying to get, you know, I was just trying to get 10 open micers. I figured anybody would want to work. And uh, I had about five reach out, and it was just going to be a, too much of a mess to try to get them out there. You know, I was going to have the amp on the back of my truck and, uh, to start doing stand-up and thank God that we you know we didn't I should have planned it out better because we went uh, we went over to East Beach and it was just so heavily patrolled it was some it would have been a fucking mess you know nobody was allowed to drink over there and then you know the regular beach is uh, it doesn't really have access so you would have to carry everything there and that would be a mess well we went uh, 11 miles e west to uh, over to Jamaica Beach and when we finally got there we drove up and down, up and down, until finally we're like, dude, I mean, we have nowhere to park. So uh, we asked this nice couple, and they were nice enough to uh, move things around, let us back up in there. And, you know, I never learned my lesson. You know, I, 25 years of this shit. I can't tell you how many times I've been sunburned. Uh, one time I was at a ski resort in 2013. I may have told the story before. And uh, I thought it would be a great idea because it's nice and warm up on the mountain, but it, it, the snow's still cold to uh i was gonna wear a tank top go down the mountain i didn't even know how to ski you know so by the time i got up to the top which took about an hour by the time you get off the lift and the damn lines and everything else that's going on uh you know i i was already crisp and i didn't know it this guy at the top you know being one of those carnies that lets you on a ride basically uh trying to make a you know soft joke was like hey it hey, looks like you need some sunscreen man and I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, it's down at the cabin. I don't really feel like I need it. Well, 
Later that night, I couldn't open up my eyes or anything like that, and I ended up having to spend the rest of the trip in, uh, in, the, in the room drinking and uh, watching Lifetime movies. It was a total nightmare uh, of a trip. And, you know, I guess it, it would have been better if it would have lasted like 30 minutes getting down the mountain, but again, I didn't know how to ski, so I was wrecking. You know, skis were flying off. Uh, you know, I shit my pants at one point when I was trying to be funny. And it was just, it was crazy, man. It was a, the worst experience for, for me ever, you know. I'm glad everybody else had fun. I'm not knocking the fact I went, but. So that was one time. Uh, let's see, I was at my sister's. This was probably in, let's see, I got fired from the ports in 17. Uh, later, that was in May of 2017. So the summer, no, early summer 2017, I was working construction, running uh, excavators and shit. Well, one evening, uh, I had way too much to drink, like normal, but this time I, I had stayed up late, too. I think we may have done some cocaine. And uh, the morning after, I was still hammered, but my sister had something going on, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to jet over to my dad's. I didn't have a secure place at that time because I was working in the ports, but uh, so on my way to my dad's, I stopped at a bar, and I, I, I hit you know three or four Jaeger bombs back to back. And then uh, when I got to my dad's house, he had this pool, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to hop on this float, just relax, you know, take the edge off a little bit. Well, you know, come to find out I had sunglasses on. He thought I was just chilling. I was asleep. I was passed out drunk, you know. You're not just waking me up. So he thought I was just chilling, and he made a few jokes, but we also had the music going. So it's not like I was being very responsive. Well, the next day after that, I was burned to a crisp, too. And uh, I went back out in the field to work construction. We were laying pipe down in like an eight foot trench and uh, I was the only guy that spoke English on the crew. And boy, they really gave it to me. It was so hot and you know, plus your, your skin is just on fire. Uh, that was the end of, end of that job. That's when I went back to Alaska. I said, fuck it, I, I gotta get away from the sun. I can't do it anymore. Like I do it to myself every time. I was in the sun for hour tops Saturday. I had that dumb tank top on as you saw at the beginning of the video. Uh, yeah, and I was like, you know, they've been telling me I need to get a little tan, uh, which is, I know it's gay, it's hacky, whatever. I bought, I went out of my way to even buy the sunscreen. I just never put it on, you know, it's got, still got the label on it. So I got me a nice one right now. It's, it's a tank top outline, so I look kind of like a, a soccer mom who's unprepared for her first day. You know how they all get, they, uh, they pack the kids up and, and get all the balls and everything down to the, the field, but they forget the sunscreen too because they're such a busy body, right? And they're like, ah, oh, it's just a sunburn. Ugh. Great shows this weekend. Uh, everything did not go as planned. I was planning the whole weekend what we're going to do, where we're going to do shows, all that. Everything fell through. You know, you got the coronavirus breaking back out down there. And uh, a lot of the guys who've been on my show are right. You know, I really haven't been out of East Texas, which is like a Bible Belt community. Down there in, in Galveston, where it's just filled with savages, like, you know, Houston and shit, uh, you, can't, you can't get a meal after 9 p.m., you know? And even if you can at the Waffle House, there's a line outside to get in. And when you do get in, they got these, these rubber things that look like bug nets in between the booths. It looks like a hospital. It looks like you're trying to order waffles, you know, with a, with a big slab of butter on top in a hospital. I, I'm not having it. So uh, you couldn't find food. So this went on like the Friday night. We, could, we couldn't find any food. So it was 3 in the morning. And I uh, finally just went to a gas station and got a bag of Takis and a couple tubes of M&Ms called it a night. Last night, uh, we went back out to the Strand. Uh, I didn't get to tell jokes last night. It was a mess out there. Uh, we went back to the same bar and they had this parody band going on over there, uh, which was funny in itself because <laughs> I don't know what it is about parody bands, but this is the second or third one I've seen. And I've noticed a trend with those guys. Like uh, early in the night, they'll be really good. They'll be hilarious, you know, in everything they do. And as they start to slowly draw a crowd, the crowd gets larger and larger and larger. They, you can tell that they, they start trying way too hard. It's like, dude, what do you, you don't have to try that hard. You were being funny at first. So uh, yeah, it started off, they're jamming, they're playing good music, and they're all dressed like uh, Motley Crue, and they were playing like, you know, cover songs, but a different version of them. And at the, towards the end, they're rapping, you know? Everybody's dancing, having fun to these pop songs and the rock and roll that they're playing. 
And they're up there rapping, like, you know, trying to be funny, but it's way so overdone. So we left that place, went over to uh, another bar called Bliss. I didn't want to go in because the night before, I was trying to explain this to my little brother. Uh, we had these shirts on, the Hawaiian shirts that, you know, were brand new, so they were basically pressed. And, uh, we, yeah, we bought them at Walmart, so it's not like anything big, but what do they know, you know what I mean? They don't really have a, a good, outstanding Walmart there. So just walking by uh, any club in, in, in kind of a slum area of Galveston Island, uh, they're going to think we have money. So my brother kept wondering why every time we'd walk by this club, they're offering us free wristbands. Well, they think we're going to spend money in there. I'm 10 months sober. My little brother's already drunk at this point. So Saturday, they, they offer the wristbands again. We go in, and I'm like, all right, at least there's chicks in here this time. You know, the night before, it was dudes, like, dancing. And uh, it's already set up all wrong anyways because they got red lights that aren't moving. It's just red, dim lights that, that would, like, basically like a gothic club. It would suit a gothic club, which would be nice. You know, I like those kind of clubs. But this was, you know, they're playing Little Wayne from 2006 and stuff that'll just make your ears bleed unless you're with a chick who seems to like it and you got to put up with it. And uh, so I'm at the bar, I'm drinking a water, I'm talking to some girls or whatever. And uh, meanwhile, my, my little brother's hammered. He's on the dance floor. Uh, there's a sorority like party that's bar hopping. You know, they're kind of going to the same bars we are. And uh, there was a, like, I guess what they call the mom of the sorority, like a grandma, basically. But she was out there getting down on the dance floor. So my little brother somehow got brushed up next to her and was, like, grinding on her, which was, you know, hilarious in itself. But what happened, he looked over at the bar, and I guess for some reason he thought I was looking at him. And uh, you know how people do, especially when you're, you're like my brother or something. He was going to try to make me laugh by acting so outlandish, but I was not looking at him. I had no idea where he was, so... He was out on the dance floor, like, doing these ridiculous grinding moves on this grandma. And uh, she was having a little bit of it. Well, one of the sorority sisters walked up and said, Don't you lay a hand on my, on, what, what do they call her, mama or some bullshit. So, you know how those weird things go. And, uh, anyways, they had a problem with him. You know, he was already fucked up, so he, got a, he popped an attitude. And uh, he got a little angry about, you know, he got asked we, he got asked to leave. He came up to me. I told the girls I was talking to. It was nice to meet him, but maybe another time. And uh, I said, I said, Travis, you got to relax, man. You got to realize, first of all, they're already not happy that they gave us free admission into this club and we're not spending a dime. You know, they think we're, you know, big rollers over here. We're not. I'm drinking water. You're not. You're already hammered. You don't need any more to drink. And uh, another thing, you know, it, it, if we're not spending money in there and, and it looks like we're causing even the slightest problem, of course they're going to get rid of us so they can let two more people in because they got that stupid line thing going on with the coronavirus. At least, you know, downtown it wasn't as bad. I guess they must have different rules or something because along the seawall, there's three classic bars of Galveston on the seawall. There's one called the Poop Deck. There's one called uh, The Float and one called The Spot, which I talked about in the first part of the show. That place fucking blows. And uh, they were holding lines. But the thing about it, they, they were actually following the guidelines to capacity. So what, what normally is four or 500 people at this float patio bar is you can see right through. There's not even a crowd. They're limiting six to a table. And uh, so basically, you know, you're, just your big groups are going in there and... Uh, I guess the only good thing about it is you can easily spot the creeps, you know, those guys who who were probably locals, but they, they somehow got their hands on a nice outfit from the mainland, probably stole it off a tourist who was so drunk and he dropped it out of his bag. And uh, But anyways, you can, <laughs> you can spot those guys easy, you know, because there's not as many people in there, so it's nice to avoid them. Anyways, like I was getting into earlier, uh, after everything shuts down, you know, you're getting hungry. He was drunk. I hadn't eaten all day. So, like, you know what? We're going to head over to Taco Bell, uh, get some shit food, you know, 12 Doritos Locos Tacos, eat like Artie Lang or Bob Biggerstaff for a minute. There's 30 cars on the line, 30. I, I'm, I shit you not. There was no dine-in. This was at, like, 1.30 in the morning. So we jet over across the island uh, to the Whataburger. Again, 30 cars. You know, and, uh, like, you know, Friday night, we were just like, fuck it, let's get some candy. Last night, I was like, you know, there's got to be a different solution going on. And, it, you know, a light bulb went off in my head. And I said, all right, you know what? Let's go to the hood. He's like, what? I don't want to go to the hood. I said, dude, we'll lock the doors. I got a K-bar in here. We'll be fine. You know, just uh, take your 
dumb shirt off and I got t-shirts on the back, you know, ACDC, whatever, put that shit on. You know, they'll think we're skater punks, not rich dudes, you know, looking like rich dudes, whatever. So we did that and uh, we start driving down the hood. Bam, taco truck, no line, nobody waiting. I said, "Uh uh-huh, these stupid tourists just waiting in line for the same shit food they eat on the mainland. So dumb. Ugh, nothing gets on my nerves worse than a wannabe. All these tourists, you know, the reggae music, they think they... The only time they ever wear a Hawaiian shirt is when they're on the island and then they'll get home. It'll go in the back of their closet until next year and that's their vacation every year, Galveston Island. I couldn't imagine living that life. I don't like the place. I hate the place. The city's run down just walking around at night. I uh, I was filming a little bit of a, like a, this, I guess this little docu-series I'm filming I don't think I'm going to release because it's not comedy. It's not funny. It's just like basically showcasing my point of view what's going on in the world so you know who gives a fuck everybody's got their own it's just my personal reference for the future but i'm walking around the seawall at night and all you know what's normally packed with people all night you know it's just empty mask you know trash people sleeping on benches you know this stinks no one's taken out the trash because nobody's hired people are burning windies down it's just you know what are you gonna do so anyways, this is the third part of the Galveston trip. We lost some footage. Uh, I know in the, I think it was the first or second part of this. This is the day after the Russell interview. I'm on my way home. I'm four and a half hours into my drive. I got about 30 minutes left. I can't wait. Ugh, I woke up this morning on the island. I said, I just want to go home. I want to be in the studio. You know, I want to get a shower. I want to be alone. I don't want to be around anybody. Fuck them. You know? And, uh... Yeah, I don't even know where I'm going with this, you know, so it's such a tiring weekend, a lot of traveling, a lot of driving. I guess now I got to hire a producer because just setting this shit up is a pain in the ass, but I did learn a lot. Like now, you know, I figured out how to set this shit up in my truck. I know I could do it with a regular talk mic or Apple earphones, but, you know, it really foots the bill that I'm holding a microphone while I'm driving with a ski mask and headphones on. It's hilarious. If I was to get pulled over right now, it'd be the greatest thing ever. How about that live arrest yesterday with Russell, too? That was great. Uh, we couldn't get the camera around in time to capture it. Oh, I hope that feedback doesn't come through the whole time. Uh, some of the fans have requested that I start a PayPal. Um, I don't, you know, I haven't really been huge on monetization or anything like that yet because, you know, I'm just putting out constant content for the fans. That's what I do. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck. So uh, you know, I'll abide by the wishes because they're really talking me into it. So uh, that'll be up on my Twitter bio if you want to check that out and, uh, you know, shed some cash. Why don't we, you know, do whatever. I'm not, you know, just do your thing. You know, I'm going to try to get out this summer. Or not this summer, after this summer, probably in the fall. I'm going to try to get up to New York and do some, uh, try to interview with some of the guys up there. That'd be good. My breathalyzer's going off. I don't have four hands or I blow into it yes i know it's sad right don't drink and drive if you do drink and drive just be sure you don't blow a 0.39 or you'll have one of these breathalyzers for two years and you get treated like a murderer hold on passing police right now it's 35 miles an hour right here he looks like he just hit a pole please get pulled over please get pulled over fuck i don't want to do something outlandish to get pulled over you know because then i might get a real ticket uh, so yeah, the PayPal will be up, do your thing or not. I don't, you know, I'm not pushing for monetization yet. I told them I would maybe do it in August, but I've had a few people reach out now. So that'll be up. Uh, one last thing before we wrap this. Oh, Dave Landau confirmed, not this Tuesday, but the next Tuesday, he'll be coming on the show. So any and all questions you have, I know Compound's going through their thing. There's a lot of drama going on on Twitter. Anything you guys want me to reach out to Dave about, uh, you know, DM me on Twitter. My DMs are open for now. Uh, fuck, dude. I'm going to have to do this shit. Hold on. Give me a second. I've got to do it for the show. It's ridiculous. Don't drink and drive. I look like a loser. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? I used to be a big piece of shit. The fuck up. sucker all right i don't mean it's so dumb having that thing in here it's the only thing that makes me want to just go get a bottle and drink and drink and drink you know what i mean i don't even have the desire to drink anymore that went away after the first three months of being sober Ugh. um 
Yeah, so some of the fans wanted me to talk to Dave about punk rock, and I got back to him. I said, yeah, that'll be easy. That's all I listen to. So apparently there's some, something going on. The fans think all I listen to, I guess because I'm young, is the hip-hop and, and the rap and stuff, which I do, but not not in a way that m- most people would. I listen to it for comedic purposes, like if I'm in a bad mood on the way to work in the morning. There's this guy named Young Dro that I'll put on sometimes when I don't have time to uh, pull over and get a Red Bull. Because uh, there's nothing like hearing a guy yelling into a microphone talking about uh, he's got an AK-47 that runs off gasoline. Bitch, if you keep you know snitching, I'll knock your nose off. Now you're clean. I mean, something about that, like a guy rapping like that is really getting fire. But uh, no, I like punk. I like uh, hard rock, you know, the classic stuff. I listen to reggae. I listen to everything. I was a music guy before I started this comedy thing. You know, people got on my nerves when I kept trying to start bands because they didn't want to show up. They didn't want to come play shows. You know, they, they things got into favor. Somebody wanted to run this. Or they couldn't run that, so they went running on this. The guys got tied up with a girlfriend. I said, fuck it. You know what? Just give me a microphone. I'm going to go up on the stage, and hopefully, you know, I, I, I do well. If not, then I had a blast doing it. So, uh, so yeah, so if you guys want, uh, I guess I'm going to start. Uh, I'll give recommendations uh, from, from time to time. If, if you don't care, that's fine. If, if you do, go ahead. If you want to hear what the ski mask is listening to uh as far as punk rock i've really been heavy into that lately i have some relationship problems because i like uh not the classic punk rock i've been doing the uh the pop punk you know some of the newer stuff uh one of my all-time favorite bands is uh alkaline trio well i'm just now getting around to listening to the singers uh side project solo project whatever you want to call it it's called uh matt skiba and the secrets album is is the second album they had called cuts with a k now uh ignore the album art the trust me you the album art gets on my nerves just as much as it's going to yours i don't know why it bothers me it does uh the second song on that album she wolf that's my favorite song right now uh which you know i go through favorite songs like every three days uh the first song on that album's good and there's two or three others the rest blow you'll know what i'm talking about uh, what else? Hard rock, metal. I listen to a lot of goth. Uh, I don't know. I know I don't dress the part, but that's because I don't, you know, I don't need to look like that and, and have big holes in my ear and shit if I want to get laid. So, uh, uh, band, one of my all-time favorite bands, uh, 69 Eyes. They came out with uh, the 30th anniversary album. It's all new songs. It's uh, shit. West uh, West End. West End. It's got balloons on the front. Uh, most of all, most of all the songs in there are good. I was very surprised. Uh, uh, they got a song on there called "Black Orchid." That's my favorite song on the album, and uh, a few of the others are really good. So go check that out. Uh, if you like reggae, I've been listening to a guy called Busy Signal lately. He's a, he's a newer genre. It's not the classic stuff. All you Bob Marley fags out there who don't know any other reggae, uh, it's fags with a P H. Um, sorry, P H A G S. Busy Signal. He's uh, hardcore, more like a dance hall, but he also has a slower reggae songs. He's got an album called uh, Reggae Reggae Dubbing Again. That's a good one. Kingston, there's a song on there called Kingston Town that's good. I like that a lot. Uh, if you do want some of that hardcore rap, that, that shit that's just so ridiculous, the stuff that the, this guy's rapping about, uh, his name's Young Dro, and he's got, an, uh, he's got a mixtape or album, whatever you want to call it, called Hellcat. And there's three or four, I mean, all the songs in there are clearly hilarious and ridiculous, but there's three or four on there that are really good. Uh, so Up, uh, I think the second song on the album, and uh, Too High, you know, because he's got to rap about how high he is. That's a pretty good one on that album. Uh, country music, if you're into that, go listen to Hank Williams the Third. He's got an album out. It's, it's an old album. You know, I'm just now getting around to catching up with this shit. So much music being put out uh, called The Rebel Within. Uh, if you're if you like drinking alcohol and, and things like that, you'll love this album. There's, a, there's some tracks on there that are really good for that. A track on there called uh, "Getting Drunk and Falling Down." A lot of fun. Uh, what else have I been listening to lately? Uh, uh, getting back into ska. I know it's uh, frowned upon, but I was listening to some of that this weekend. Buck09 has a new album out. It's a few good tracks on that, and I've really been getting into the Mad Caddies lately. Uh, but really just a lot of, for me personally right now, just a lot of pop punk and shit like that. So go check out that, uh, Matt Skiba album. Uh, if you've never heard of, um, uh, Alkaline Trio, uh, 
you can read anything online, they'll tell you otherwise. But personally, my go-to album, From Here to Infirmary, go check that out. I love every song on that album. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's new, you know. It, I think it came out in 2001 or 2003, you know, but that's, that's still considered new wave punk. Uh, you know. What are you gonna do? I mean, you gotta get around to you, you're gonna you gotta like something. If you're gonna hate on it, go ahead, dude. Tell me why you don't like it. You know, tell me what you don't like about it. If you think it sounds whack, man, maybe it does. Maybe you're not lying. You could be. You could you know you could be onto something there. Uh, passing over Lake Palestine right now. Just past the liquor store. That means you know that's the dead end zone back there. That's the only place you can get liquor, and it's still. I think 25 minutes from my house. So, you know, used to, when I drank, I had to drive 25 minutes to get a bottle. And uh, for you New York guys, that's straight driving 70 miles an hour, 25 minutes, you know? So that's a, that's like all the way across Long Island probably, or, you know, Manhattan. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap up this episode. We got some good shows coming out. I know with all the controversies going on, it's going to be crazy, but uh, I think I'll be a guest on one certain compound show this week. So uh, I'll release that information when I know it's okay. I know it probably is, but, you know, I don't need to burn any bridges right now. Uh, Stand-up's back this weekend, so if you're in the East Texas area and you still listen to my show and you're not one of those supporters who told me it was hilarious at the first three episodes and then slowly, f- you know, fell off, like which I get, you know, when my friends start new new projects i'll go to one or two shows and that's about it i'm not downloading the albums it's trash it's no good so that because i know them you know and they know me if they know me then like, why would they think my shit's funny you know they could they'd be like oh it's an axe it's an axe fuck off uh but anyway stand up spec this weekend so come out to uh the comedy store downtown uh tyler uh i'll hopefully be i mean i know i'll be doing sets there but hopefully we can get a fucking crowd uh I've talked about it in recent episodes, why there's no crowds. So I'll be doing set as myself. I, I got a new 15 I'm going to try, and I know it's going to bomb. But then I'll be coming out as a ski mask host, and I got a new 15 with ski mask host that I know is going to kill. So big differences out there. So keep it up. You guys got recommendations for the show. Hit it up. Uh, you know, you guys want me to take a vacation somewhere to do a show? Why not? Why not? I'll do it. Send me the dough, dude. I'll hop on a flight. I don't give a fuck. Right, things were just coming together, then they fell apart, and now they're coming back together. Okay, so uh, keep supporting the ski mask, uh, support all the other shows. Misery loves company. Sign up for the Patreon. Uh, Kevin Brennan is just a master of the art, he's killing it. Uh, Chad Zumox had a lot of good guests on lately, uh, so go, go sign up for his uh, podcast Patreon thing. Uh, if you're on Brian McCarthy's Patreon, still that's fine, but just uh, go ahead and you know, get off of his Patreon and, and get on someone else's, you know, and I'll be sure to mention that when you are signing up. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, no, I won't be launching a Patreon until maybe later in the year when I have a, a, a you know, I know that everything's going to last. Otherwise, when, you know, I just look like a greedy asshole. And, you know, you got to build up a following before you put out, pa- you know, Patreon. You know, I would hate to I would hate to be sitting in a round circle and somebody asked me how many Patreons I have after having it launched for a while and I, my number's 113, you know what I mean? I have way more listeners than that now, so why would I jeopardize that by holding out and, uh, and putting out a show that they have to pay for as of yet until I know that I got a set base of the fans and I'm interacting like I did with Russell on Saturday. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. He killed it. Just absolutely golden on that podcast. So if uh, any of you MLC guys, Kevin or Chad or anybody are down there, in Houston, be sure to uh, reach out to Russell. He can come on, drop any and all bombs. I love it. Ski Mask Collective, we'll be back in a few days. I'm going to take a rest. I got shit to do. Fuck. <laughs>